Hello, this is Matt Leonard for the Foundry, and in this video we're going to be looking at the new Pixel Analyzer in Nuke 8. So this new tool enables you to analyze single or multiple pixels or the entire image and compare color values between viewers. It works in a similar way to what you might have seen if you ever use Shake. Now the analyzer stores current, minimum, maximum, average and medium values which can then be copied to the values of other nodes for control such as color correction and things like that. And the pixel analyzer basically has two main modes, pixel selection and full frame selection. Pixel selection, which is the default mode, allows you to make a single or multiple pixel selection in the viewer for analysis. You can also analyze an area of the viewer using the region of interest. In the full frame mode, you can analyze the content of the current frame regardless of any selection that you might have made in the viewer. By default, the full frame samples the visible region in the viewer. As a result, actions that change the viewer area, such as zooming in and out or just moving around, will alter the color values that the pixel analyzer is seeing. Okay, so here we are in Nuke. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring up the pixel analyzer panel. So we're going to come across to our properties bit. This seems like a good place to put it. I'm going to come in and I'm going to split this vertically. And then in this bottom section that we've now opened up, I'm going to come across and you can see in my list of things that I could put in here, one of them is our pixel analyzer. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose that. I'll just bring this down to the bottom of the screen just so we've still got some space to put our properties of different nodes in as we go along. So let's begin by hooking up the viewer to our first set of images. So the first thing you'll see is that we have this sample area. and This enables us to choose from the viewer that we actually want to do the sampling from. So if I was, for instance, to make a new viewer, so if I go up to my images and just make a new viewer, and I connect my viewer up to, say, this multipass here, we now have our two viewers. If I have my first viewer open, and I come in, and with Command or Control, I just click somewhere in the view, say over here on the green, you can see that my pixel analyzer now analyzes that green color. And because I've only really picked one pixel, I'm getting the current, minimum, maximum, average, and medium, all of the same thing. Now, if I wanted to, I could come across now to the sample and choose a different viewer. So I could, for instance, choose viewer two. And when I do that, you can see this now changes. So if we go across and we look at viewer two, you can see we could now come in and choose a pixel here, say somewhere on the side of this building. So now as I move back and forth between the viewers, I'm basically analyzing a different pixel depending on what I'm choosing. So I'm going to stick with my current view and I'm going to delete viewer 2 for the moment. Next up, I have this current layer. And this basically enables me to choose what layer I'm analyzing the pixel from. So again, if I come across and just view this image here, and I choose again somewhere on this wall we've got the red but I could come in now and I could choose from maybe my normal pass and you can see now I'm analyzing a pixel from there or I could choose for instance my point pass and I'm analyzing a pixel from there because within this image having shuffled them in I now have some additional layers some channel sets one for my point position and one for my normals and that's what we're seeing analyzed here Okay, so you can do not only multiple viewers analyzing between them, you can also choose what layer or channel set you want to use. We're going to return to RGB just so that we're looking at color. And I'm going to remove my viewer back to our bridge scene for the time being. And up here in my viewer, I'm going to go back to my channel set of RGBA. And let's again just choose somewhere in the image, maybe these bushes here over on the left. So just a couple of notes before we move on that should be helpful. Firstly, the color swatches may not update immediately if you select a layer from the sample dropdown that's not currently visible in the viewer. And this is because the layer must be rendered in the background before the swatches are calculated. So that's one thing to be aware of. Also, if the RGB channels are not present, the first four layers available channel values are written into the pixel analyzer controls. And also, you can use the layer drop-down to sample a layer that is not displayed in the viewer. Just like we saw earlier when I chose the point or normal pass. They weren't actually visible in the viewer, but we were still able to sample them. And that can be really useful because it basically enables you to compare color and position values between layers. Okay, back to Nuke. 
there are now three ways that you can basically select your pixels for analyzing. Firstly, there's a single click method, which is what we've been doing so far. This is where you hold down Control or Command and click in the viewer to choose the pixel that you want. So for instance, if I chose somewhere in the shadow, you see we get a gray color. If I again choose somewhere in the grass, we get a green. Somewhere over here on the wood, we get a more kind of brown color. So that's a single pixel sample. We can also do multiple pixel samples. And the way we do this is we basically click and drag in the view, and that enables you to select multiple pixels. Now when you're doing this, depending on the speed in which you move your mouse will kind of depend how much the samples are different from each other. So if I zoom in and I click the command or control button, left mouse button, click down, I've, I've sampled the pixel under my mouse. If I now move quite slowly, you can see that we're drawing out this kind of line of selected pixels. All of these are now being analyzed, put together and giving us the current minimum, maximum, average and medium values. If I just do a single click, it just clears it and we're back just sampling a single pixel. However, if I move the mouse more rapidly, the distance between the samples become greater. For instance, if I click and drag and move quite rapidly across to the right, you can see that we end up with these more sporadic spread out samples. And now you can see the current sample, which was the last one, is shown in this left hand swatch. The minimum and maximum ones are then shown. So minimum will be in the shadow, maximum will be somewhere in the light area. We then have the overall average, which we can see is generally lighter because we've got more samples in the bright areas than we do in the dark, and then the medium value as well. Now the final method in which we can do our samples is via region, and this is where you would do command or control plus shift and drag. So let's go back to our overall image. I'm just going to do a single sample for a moment just so we get just everything set to the same value. So now I'm going to hold down Command or Control and Shift, and I'm going to first drag across from the top left-hand side across to the bottom right. And as we draw out our selection, you can now see that we really have a lot of pixels in here that are all being analyzed. And we can clearly see that the minimum is black, the maximum is this lighter color, the average, and the median again. Let's just do this now over just a grass area. So we're going to mainly get greens. So again, with my selection as so, I'm going to click Shift, Command or Control and just drag over an area that's grass. Now you can see mainly, apart from this little area of wood that we've chosen, we now have a mainly green set of swatches. Now so far, we've talked quite a lot about the minimum, maximum, average and medium values. Let's go back and just for the moment choose a single color. So I'm just going to come in again, choose somewhere in the green area. And let's just discuss what these are. I'm going to do multiple samples just so we have some variation. So firstly, the current, what's that showing us? That is the color value of the last pixel selected. The minimum and maximum values are the darkest and brightest color values from the selection. The average is the mean average color value of the entire selection. And the median is the midpoint color between the darkest and brightest color in the selection. Now again, let's just choose a single sample pixel here. Now below our selections that we've been looking at, samples and modes, we also have RGB, HSVL, and XY width and height. Now this tells us the color of the current pixel in red, green, blue, and alpha. It tells us the current value of the pixel in hue, saturation, value, and luminance. And then it tells you the position of the pixel in both X and Y. So at the moment, the pixel I've sampled is 346 by 510 values from this bottom left-hand side. If I was to do a region, let's zoom in here and do it from this bottom corner. So again, shift, command, and control, and drag, we now have in our x, y, width and height, it now tells us that we're starting in the bottom left hand corner at a value of 2 and 2. And then we're going up on the top right corner to a value of 47 by 40. And those values mirror what we see here in the view. Let's now just clear the selection with this button here. 
and again home the view. Now again I'm just going to take a region selection across here. Now if we want to choose what value we actually see in the RGB or HSVC we simply click the swatch. So if I click on maximum those values are then loaded in. If I click on average you can see they change and again are loaded in to these numeric values that we can then see. Now you may have noticed that at one point we were getting an interesting exclamation mark coming up. Let's simulate that again by choosing across the main area of the frame. Down here in minimum you can see we have black and this exclamation mark. Now what does that mean? Well the pixel analyzer is able to detect infinite and not a number color values and if we see this coming up it basically means that in that swatch we've either got an infinite value or not a color value. So if I click in this you can see that the problem that we've got is in our RGB the red channel and the blue channel are actually at minus and that's why this exclamation mark has come up. If I was to come in here and for instance just use something like a clamp and let's clamp our values down to 0 and 1 you can see that error is now cleared up because we basically removed the minus values from the red and the blue channel so that's now gone away. So if ever you see an exclamation mark have a look at your values and you'll probably find there's something going amiss at some point in your scene. Now we also have this range down here. If I open up this you can see that we're basically able to change the overall value structure to mirror one of these. So for instance if I wanted to see everything in 8-bit I could choose 8-bit and now you can see our values go from 0 to 255. If I was to choose 10-bit the values now go from 0 to 1024 and so on up the scale. I could also choose percentage if I wanted to and I can now see my values in a percentage range. I tend to leave it in floating point. Okay from here let's change the mode across to full frame. What this is doing is now analyzing the pixels across the entire image. Now depending on where you are zoomed in will depend really on what we're getting analyzed because the analyzer will view by default only what the viewer is seeing. So again just to get rid of the exclamation mark I'm going to add a clamp just so that we set that minimum value to black. Now if I zoom into an area over here for instance you can see that what we've got now is a black, a light green and then an average and medium greens showing me this area of the screen. However if I move across to a different area of my image which may be containing different colors such as this area on the road you can now see that we're seeing black, a light grey and then a couple of other greys for the average and medium as opposed to the greens that we saw earlier. This is because what's in the viewer is being analyzed by the pixel analyzer. Now what happens in situations where you want the pixel analyzer to view the entire image even if you're zoomed in? Well the way you can get that to work is come up to this new area in the viewer which is the full frame processing mode. When you switch this on basically what happens is the pixel analyzer now sees the entire image even though you're zoomed in only to a small area. And you can see now that our minimum, maximum, average and medium values are now showing us the entire frame as opposed to just the area we're zoomed in on. So that can be incredibly helpful. Now we've talked a lot about what this does. Let's look at one example as to how this could be useful to us. So again I'm going to turn off full frame viewing. I'm just going to home the viewer. I'm just going to move the viewer across to this very simple setup that I've put together just as an example. So what we've got here is a nice stormy sky with a castle. Not very well color graded but it will be great for what we need. And then we have some smoke that you can see I've just laid in here in the foreground. Let's go to a frame where we've got some of it visible. Now if we wanted to integrate this smoke more into the background usually the tool we would use is the grade node. So let me just open up the grade node. And I'm just going to close my clamp just so we can focus on the grade node. Now in the past what we would do is we would pick the black and white points of the foreground element which would be the smoke and we would have to try and pick and work out what the brightest and darkest pixel would be either by eye which you could achieve maybe by adjusting the f-stop or the gamma. 
you may also in the past have come across and used something like the curve tool and this enables you to choose the minimum and maximum values using something like the maximum luminance pixel so if we choose that you can see this is going to give us the maximum and minimum luminance pixel in the scene so things like that could have been useful in the past but now with our pixel analyzer this becomes very easy so for instance let's come across to our grade node and view that what we're now analyzing is the black and the white of the smoke well let's choose to come across and say we want to do a pixel selection I'm going to do command and control command or control and shift and just choose some of my smoke in kind of this area let's go somewhere like that so I'm only getting this section of the smoke now you can see I've got my minimum and maximum values I can now left click and drag my minimum value which is my darkest value into my black point on my grade node and I can choose my maximum value and drag that across to my white point. Immediately now you can see my smoke has been color corrected. If I was to turn the grade off just by disabling it with D on the keyboard, you can see the difference that's made. Now we've obviously cropped out some of this smoke because we didn't bring our selection over far enough. So let's do that now and again drag the minimum value back across to black. And now when we switch this on and off, you can see that we're getting a much cleaner and better result. From here, we would now want to say that the black point is going to be mapped to lift or black, and the white point is going to be mapped to gain or white. And the lift and gain need to be set to the lightest and darkest point of the background. Again, in the past, we'd have had to done this by eye, but now we can come across and view that main image let's just take off our selection so I'm going to clear my selection I'm going to set my mode to full frame and I can now drag my minimum value across to lift and my maximum value across to gain this will now take the black point of the smoke and match it to the color of the lift and the lightest or white point of the smoke and match it to the gain so now if we view that what we'll see is our smoke has now nicely been color graded to the more blue color of our night scene. Again, if I switch this on and off, you can see the dramatic change that it's made. And again, if I move my viewer across to my merge node and switch it on and off, you can see that our smoke is much more integrated now with our overall scene. Now, obviously, in the grade node, you may still choose to come in and adjust the multiply offset and gamma. But really, with our black point, white point, lift and gain set, we're much closer to getting the grade set for us than we would have been if we were trying to do it by eye. And what would have taken a few minutes in the past, we can now do in a few seconds with our new pixel analyzer tool. So this takes us to the end of this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. This has been Matt Leonard for The Foundry. Newgate welcomes the powerful scopes from Hero or Shot Management Conform Editing and Review tool into Nux UI. The histogram, vector scope, and waveform scopes all update live synchronized with playback. Refine grades with precise analytic control. Compare multiple images against each other. Check your legal color levels for broadcast directly in Nuke. Nuke 8 scopes will be a welcome addition for anyone working in broadcast where precise color control is a must.